Okay, so let's talk about the CLEP College Algebra exam. Now, because you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you are studying to take the CLEP College Algebra exam, and that is definitely a smart move because if you can pass this exam, you're going to get college credits for college algebra uh, in most colleges and universities, saving you time and money. And uh, if you have taken at least Algebra 2 in high school, you definitely should try to pass the CLEP College Algebra exam. And what I have for you here is a practice problem that you should be able to do uh, pretty easily if you are fully prepared for CLEP College Algebra. Let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. So we want to simplify this expression. Uh, uh, the expression is 3 times the square root of 20 plus 7 times the square root of 5 all over the square root of 2 times the square root of 3. Okay, so if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, and of course, we'll walk through the solution to this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. I'm also the founder of TC Math Academy, and uh, over several years, I've constructed many math courses to include test prep courses, and I actually have a very successful CLEP College Algebra test prep course. I'm going to leave a link to it uh, in the description of this video. Now, again, if you have taken up to Algebra 2, well, you should be pretty much, um, well, at least have the, uh, you know, the math background to uh, be successful on this test. But the key to passing the CLEP College Algebra exam, and by the way, this is not to be confused with the CLEP College Math exam. There is two CLEP uh, math uh, exams, one being college mathematics, which involves much more advanced math. I actually have that test prep course as well. So if you're interested in either my CLEP College Algebra or CLEP College Math, a matter of fact, I'll leave the link, uh, the links to both of those courses in the description of this video. But here is the, uh, the key to passing the CLEP College Algebra exam. You have to be fully prepared. So just because you maybe did well in high school algebra two, you have to know all this material. It's got to be fresh in your mind. And it, you know, it's like taking a final exam for algebra one, geometry, and algebra two, particularly a lot of the advanced concepts in algebra two. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. So again, we have three square root of 20 plus seven square root of five over square root of two, square root of two times the square root of three. What is this all equal to? Well, this is the correct answer. Okay, so 13 times the square root of 30 over 6. All right, now, if you didn't get this right, just use this as feedback to review. If you got this uh, correct, that is fantastic. But again, this is only one small topic. That will be on the CLEP College Algebra exam, namely working with radicals and square roots. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the solution here. So here is our problem. And I'm gonna uh, kind of run through this uh, pretty quickly because there is a lot to cover. And obviously I'm not gonna turn this into a full lesson. So take a look at the steps. You can pause the video and kind of study uh, things further. But again, uh, this kind of material, this kind of problem, you know, radical square roots, this is an absolute must know for the CLEP College Algebra exam. So first things first, let's take a look at our numerator here. So we have three square root of 20 plus uh, seven square root of five. So we wanna see if we can add uh, these two terms in the numerator, and indeed we can because we can simplify this square root of 20 uh, with the concepts of perfect squares. So we can think of the square root of 20 as the square root of 4 times 5, and then of course we can break up the square root of 4 times 5, uh, these factors, as their own individual square roots. So what we have here is 3 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 5 plus, uh, of course, 7 square root of 5. Now, the advantage of doing that is that we can actually take the square root of 4. Okay, so the square root of 4 is 2. So we have 3 times 2 times the square root of 5. And now we have a square root of 5 here and a square root of 5 there. So we can add. Basically, this is very much like like terms. So you can't add radicals unless you have the exact same uh, radical or square roots. For example, if I have 2 square root of 7, I can add this with 1 square root of 7 because uh, we have a uh, square root, uh, both, both of these terms have the square root of 7. But if I'm trying to add 2 square root of 7 to 3 square root of 5, I can't do this because the radicals are different. But in this case, we are dealing with the square root of 5. All right, so let's go ahead and proceed. So we have uh, 3 times 2, which is 6. 
square root of 5 plus 7 square root of 5. So all we need to do is add the numbers in front of the square roots, kind of like the coefficients in like terms. So 6 plus 7, of course, is 13. So now we have 13 square root of 5. All right, so we just kind of simplified the numerator. So now we have to work on the denominator, but we have a lot more steps to go. So let's go ahead and continue on. All right, so here is our problem. Again, we just uh, worked on simplifying the numerator. That is 13 square root of 5. And now we have uh, square root of 2 times the square root of 3 in the denominator. Okay, so this is pretty easy. The square root of 3, square root of 2 times the square root of 3, uh, we can write this as the square root of 2 times 3, which of course is the square root of 6. Now, if you left your answer like this, well, that is not correct because we have a problem here. We have an irrational number in the denominator. Remember, you cannot leave your answer like that. This would be like if you had 3 square root of 7. Well, this is not allowed. Okay, so we have to rationalize the denominator. Now, in this case, what you would do is you would multiply both the numerator and denominator by the square root of 7. So that's what we're going to have to do here. We're going to have to uh, rewrite this. Now, you have to be careful when you're doing algebra that you just don't stop, you know, in other words, don't do three uh, quarters or 90% of a problem. You got to go, uh, you know, basically all the way and make sure that a problem is fully simplified. So here, this square root of 6, again, is not allowed. So all we have to do is multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 6. And now let's go ahead and take a look at our answer. All right, so the square root of 6 times the square root of 6 will be the square root of 36, which, of course, is 6. That is our denominator. And then 13 times uh, the square root of 5 times the square root of 6, we're simply going to multiply the square root of 5 times 6 under one radical, which, of course, is 13. So we have 13 over the square root, 13 times the square root of 30 over 6. Now, of course, if 6 can go into 13, we would simplify even further, but it cannot. So this is the final answer. Okay, so I don't think these steps are difficult. At least, hopefully, they shouldn't be too difficult uh, for you if you are going to be uh, taking the CLEP College Algebra exam, because what we're doing here is pretty much like Algebra 1 level kind of work. But again, I think a lot of people who can pass the CLEP College Algebra exam kind of underestimate how well they have to go back and review a lot of topics. There's a lot of material that you'll learn between Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2. But again, the emphasis here would be on Algebra 2 level material like logarithms, polynomials, quadratic equations, rational equations, etc., etc. Okay, so you could definitely do this, but make sure you study. And again, if you want to check out my CLEP College Algebra and or CLEP College Math uh, test prep courses, I'll leave a link uh, to both of them in the description of this video. And with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your college career. Thank you for your time and have a great day.